Well, let's get it going. Yeah, yeah. All right, so we're going here. We're live. Eddie, thanks for coming on, man. I appreciate it. Appreciate it for having me. What's the nickname? Ebro? Erob. Erob. Yeah, the NBA gave me that name. Well, when I was watching one of your videos where you threw the ball up in the air and then you dunked it, the, the announcer goes, Erob. Yeah, yeah. I was we like, were, oh, that must be the nickname. Yeah, we were uh, out west playing Golden State. Golden State. Playing against some, some of my close friends on that team, uh, Gilbert Arenas, Jason Richardson. Yeah, we had, we had fun that game. This past 48 hours, I've just been going through your stats and looking at your teammates and everyone that you've played with. But we'll get to that. Like usually how I like to do these podcasts is start from the beginning of your career right. to where it ended to where you're at now. So, you know, essentially this podcast is really hockey based. But you know how, let's say, for example, you were a basketball player right. and you wanted to do something else with your career. I don't know what you would have wanted to be, but I would have wanted to be a basketball player. So I would have given anything to dunk a basketball in Madison Square Garden. Oh, yeah. And the fact that you have done that, I'm going to pick your brain here and oh, hopefully yeah. you can ready. paint a picture. Oh, yeah, I'm ready. Um, all right. So let's start. But like you're undrafted, but you didn't go to the NBA. So did you have a, like a chip on your shoulder going into the camp in Charlotte, I believe? Because that was the first team you played for. Right. Yes. I mean, you, you, you kind of have to always play with that chip on your shoulder. Yeah. I mean, in mine, I, I would probably had two chips on my shoulder coming from where I'm from, you know, Flint, Michigan. You know, that's a zoo. So it, I was blessed to be able to get out of that. And I think one of the things that helped me as far as, you know, my being a basketball player and, you know, kind of playing with that chip on your shoulder is, you know, the competition I had growing up playing. I always played against older guys. You know, I didn't go to high school. So my times in the streets was, you know, during the times where I should have been in school. So the local, the local guys that I'm playing against are, you know, grown men. At the at the Burson Rec Center where I, where I hung out at when, when I should have been in school, but you know I was always playing ball, working on my game, or whatever. So that that kind of that kind of gave me, you know, the chip on my shoulder playing playing against older competition. And then once you get to your level, of competition is like, yeah. you know, you you, you kind of have an advantage there. So did you put yourself into those situations or did you know that this was something that you had to do in order to, to become a better basketball player? Or did you have guidance of someone saying, listen, you have to be playing here in order to make the next step? Like, did you have that knowledge already or did you just know? I mean, you just, you know, um, you, you never know. You never know what, what it's going to lead to. Like, I had no idea of, of you know, that I was going to make it to the NBA. You know, coming up in Flint, Michigan, it was just about surviving, trying to find, you know, the next meal. You know, my parents were obviously, you know, strung out on drugs. No. So, yeah. So I pretty much grew up on my own at me and my sister at what, 10, 11 years old. We went and moved with my granny on the north side. You know, we were kind of like, you know, kind of like growing up, it was like. We, we lived in the suburbs, you know, because back in the day, you know, if your parents worked in the GM shop that, you know, my, both of my parents worked at where, okay. we, where they produced cars and made Buick. Yeah. You know, at the car plant. Yeah. If your parents worked there, you know, you, you were you were back in the 70s, you know, that, that was a lot of money back in the day. So we, we had everything until, you know, the drugs came. Then obviously they went missing for weeks at a time. S stuff started getting cut off in the house. It's like, where's mom and dad? Like, what is going on? And, you know, then the lights went out, power's out, you know, and then now we had to move with my granny who stayed on the north side, which this is where my parents was trying to keep us restricted from because they didn't want us exposed to the drugs. Yeah, all of that stuff. Street so life. I moved and what's crazy, I moved right into the right, right into into the neighborhood of that from where my grandmother lived on Wesley Street. So obviously you and I come from different backgrounds. Right. Um, to keep your mind off that, like I, I couldn't, like the, the hardest thing maybe I had to go through at an age that you're talking about is like losing a hockey game and that's right. nothing compared <laughs> to what you've gone through. So right. to keep your mind off that, like not having a parental supervision, was it just basketball? Was it just obsession being in the gym? I mean, it's weird because like I always had a basketball and was just dribbling. Like I never knew what, what I was going to do with it. Yeah. Until, you know, I moved on the north side and my grandmother was a teacher. Okay. So the drug infested area and the gang infested area I lived in. Yeah. By her teaching all those guys that were out there on the block because, you know, obviously she taught them. It gave me the green light. It was like I was okay to be out there. Because, what do you mean it gave you the green light? I mean, just, just to be in the neighborhood because you got to think this is a gang. This is a gang area. 
So if you're not your from your grandmother's that, area was a grand. Yes, okay, yes. Okay, okay. Yeah. So if you're not from that area, you, yeah, you know, you you gonna have a problem with the locals, you know, because it's it's territorial like that. They're selling drugs out there and they're in there in the gang. So as soon as I step outside my porch. The game is right there. I, I'm seeing everything. So I then, was, how did you avoid that? How did you like? Did I you? I mean, I mean, I was confused because I mean, I remember the first day. I remember the first day like it happened yesterday. As I pulled to, pulled up to my granny's house, it was like a couple hours before supper time, right? Which is like six o'clock. And the scene I seen was something I never seen before. Is like is like it's like the movie paid in full. I've if you ever seen that movie, the yeah. opening where everyone's hanging out. You know, yeah. girls, the guys, you I've know, the it. cars and I was you know, the money, the How jewelry. Old are you? I was I was eleven years old. Ten, eleven years old. I was going to the sixth grade. <laughs> you know what I'm wow. saying? And the fifth grade, I mean, but and um I seen that and I was like, Wow, what like what is going on? What are they doing? And I grew up in that and you know, my friends were obviously you're gonna be I don't want to say corrupted, but influenced to some points. You yeah. have to know as far as where, like, yeah. what you want to do. Like, I never, I never joined a gang. I yeah. never sold drugs. Yeah, you know. But obviously, my friends were affiliated. Yeah, with doing all of those. So I just have to. I had to move smartly. Um, you know, I had to know when okay. to hang out with them, not when to hang out. You know, because it, it was crazy back then. Once home. people found out that you had a skill set, that you were good at basketball. Did people maybe leave you alone? Did people maybe stop trying to get you to, you know, sell drugs to become in a gang? Because, okay, wait I mean, a second, this guy has a talent. He might be able to go to the NBA. Let's let this guy give him a shot. Or was there jealous people that were like, no, nah, man, you got You have to do this with me uh, on the street corner. Was yeah, there anything like that? I mean, with me, I used, I used like, the, like, I remember the first time I was like the store, the local store had that I know that... You know, I'm going to be running back and forth to a thousand times a day because it's right there on the corner. That's what kids do. We run to the yeah. store, we get chips, we get juice. So yeah. as I'm, I remember the one day as I'm dribbling my basketball, you know, to the store, one of the, the local drug dealers was like, hey, what you doing with that basketball? And then and then it was crazy. He was like, he was like, I bet you fifty dollars. He was like, I bet you fifty dollars I can steal the ball from you. And he, he didn't know I can handle the ball. He didn't know I can dribble at 10 like that. So yeah. so he's a grown man? He's a grown man. He's okay. he's probably in his 20s. Okay. You know what I'm saying? They, they, you know, teenagers, yeah. yeah. late teens, early 20s, right? So yeah. he's trying to take the ball from me. He couldn't take it. And I think like 10 minutes had went by. I'm like, how long is this going to last? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And he was like, man, I give up. I give up. Boom. He gave me $50. I was like, wow, 50 bucks, right? That's a lot of money. And so... That transition to him going to other dealers out there, hey, I bet you can't take the ball from him. And he'll bet he'll bet crazy like two or three hundred dollars. And he was like, Hey, don't let him get the ball, I'm gonna get you a cut. So I'm dribbling boom 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 and, and then it just turned to this is how I was making money. Your hustle, it's like the movie my White hustle, Men Can't yeah, Jump. My, yeah, my hustles was, you know, basketball at that age was, you know, them trying to steal the ball from me. And and, and I built a, build a relationship with them from that. And then it turned from that, then it turned to playing one-on-one. -on -one. <laughs> so I, I started getting my game. That's how I started really getting my game. Just was playing the local, you know, the D-boys in the hood, the older guys from try, them trying to take the ball from me. Not in a violent way, but... You know, for money. That's incredible. And yeah, that's how that's how that's how I was able to make money. Like, and then I got so caught up in that lifestyle, you know, of making money that way and, and playing different guys for money. Oh man! And then shit, I forgot about high school. <laughs> that's incredible. What? A, that's an amazing story. Yeah, I forgot about high school and the burst in the local gym I was going to. Uh, Raymond Jones, who was, you know, the local top AAU guy okay. in Flint. You know, he had Mateen Cleese, he had Antonio Smith, the Roberts, the Moore Petersons, the, yeah. all the guys that went to Michigan State. Like, I went to high school with those guys. Yeah. You know, and, and, and while I'm in the stands watching them play, I was supposed to have been out there playing, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I think they won, I can't recall, but I think they won state, like, 
I think they were on state maybe two or two years, two or three years, and or something like that. And they was in you know, the word on the round town was you know, if he, if if Eddie, if y'all had Eddie, y'all had won four years in a row. Cause I was kind of like the missing link, like to the team. Or what, you know, were I mean? you living in Michigan during the Fab Five era? During yeah, yeah. you were there. I was in Flint. Yeah, actually, you're one of your teammates was Jalen. Jalen Rose, which was crazy. I can't I, like I couldn't like I was Jalen Rose. I was Chris Rebber growing up. I was I was you know how you, you that, yeah. that's just what it was like Michigan. We were. We were so big on the Fab Five, like that was like the Black Sox. Yeah, like everybody, like everybody in Flint, in Detroit, I'm sure all those surrounding areas. Yeah, wanted to be like the Fab Five. That's incredible that you yeah. were there for that when that hype was around. Yeah, actually, Michigan. Who else is from? Uh, Glenn Rice. No, but different sport. Uh, Floyd Mayweather. Floyd Mayweather. Have you yeah, ever Grand met Rapids. him or anything? I like? never met Mayweather. You never met him? Never met him. Is he from Flint? He's from Grand Rapids. How far is that from Flint? <laughs> few hours a few hours yeah a few That's hours another away. guy that comes over there yeah mayweather yeah man talk about a crazy childhood yeah. i didn't know that yeah know that, that where else are you gonna find that on the internet like the research right. i did on you there's nothing like that so i didn't know that was your upbringing yeah, man. yeah my upbringing was crazy like you know so but just and, talk like anyway. and then like and then what's i'll give you another crazy story like how i got my name out you know through colleges okay. is you know my i had a I had an AU coach who was, who was his, his mind was before his time, our time or whatever. So he figured out a way to make, to get me on the roster. In college. For, 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 the, for the, um, the top high school players. Like I played with Mateen. I played with all the top high school players. Okay. On, on, you know, in the AU circuit. But if you think of like, and then when I think about it, I was like, well, how did he, how was he able to do yeah, that? Yeah, how did you get in there? Because I would be, I would be. I would be Mateen Cleese when he wasn't able to show up for the tournaments. They put your name down. Is. But I don't know how he worked that because when we when we when we were in Ohio when we were in Ohio, we wore numbers, so we didn't have names. We wore numbers, so I was like number four eighty nine. Like oh. you, you know, you know what I'm saying. So I and think they didn't have any names on the jersey. They didn't have names on the jersey, so I think that played a big part of it. But and then Dude. like I went to high school, right? And I, I was roaming the halls. I wasn't in school. I, I wasn't doing none of that. He was I was there for the I, girls. I was just roaming. Yeah. I was just, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> so the the um, the junior varsity coach Hewley, Coach Hewley, he called me in the office one day, right? Yeah. Because at the time it was like. The AAU tournaments we went to down in Ohio, those coaches, you know, they would send the players who they had interest in letters to their high schools. That, and that's how you got your letters of intent or interest or, you know, showing that the college had interest in you, right? Okay, I see what you're saying. So he pulls me into the office. He's like, I figured out what's going on. I'm like, oh, shit, I'm in trouble. You know, I didn't know what was going yeah. on. He was like, he was like, I want to show you something. So... He shows me this stack of letters. It's, it's like from Florida State, Florida, Michigan, Michigan State, all the top schools. But he, it, was, it was in different names describing me. And like he's seen me play before, like cause I, I played intramurals at, you know what I'm saying, yeah. at, at high school or he saw me in gym class. So when they were describing the type of game that I, that the person was, yeah. suppo I was supposed to, you yeah. know, like a Morris Peterson, he was like, first of all, Morris Peterson don't even go to this high school. <laughs> That's incredible. So he's like, well, so he figured out like, okay, so you're playing, you're, the, you're, you're, you're a, you guy is using you. Using a different a name. Substitute, yeah, right, right. You're, so you're being substituted for the players that can't make the tournament and you're using their name and, and you're receiving mail because they, they're jotting down. We're like, who the hell is who the hell is this guy? And they, you know, whatever number I was, that's who they sent the letter to. And they thought your last name was Peterson or something. They thought my last name was Peterson or Cleese or Smith or Thrash or who who like I've I've used like all my teammates' name when they couldn't come, right? <laughs> That so is. so that's how I was recognized, you know, from colleges. And then he bought me in that office and showed me those stack of mails, and, 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 and it blew my mind. Your life must have changed that day. Yeah, and it, and it kind of made me. I think I was seventeen at the time. Wow. Like I had all at this time. I had I was you know I had, I was on the verge of just you know I had dropped out purely. You know I dropped all the way out. Like I stopped going to school. Period. And so I then what did you do? As soon as you dropped out, out, I just hung out outside. In the trap, as they call it. In the trap. <laughs> yeah, I was just in the trap, you know. But with a basketball so, in your hand. Yeah. And so um, what happened was my AAU coach, you know, once I, once I started, you know, 
he thought he always thought I was an older guy because I was hanging, you know, I was in the gym during hours where I should have been in school. So I came down. I think I came to the gym with one of the the top high school players. Um, I think it, it might have been Mateen Cleese at the time. I think it was. Okay. I think I met him down to Burston, and and the AU coach he didn't know I knew this guy. Yeah. And, and and he took me he took me to Ray. He was like, Oh, I know all about this guy. He he ain't doing nothing with his life. He he, he his his time is past. And he was like I was like, What you mean my time is past? I'm like, I'm only sixteen. <laughs> I'm only sixteen, seventeen, right? Yeah. He's like, What? I thought you were older. So we sat down, he was you know, he kind of helped me get my life in perspective and you know, and I took you know, I told him about the um you know the the uh the letters I had been receiving and all that stuff. Like, he had no idea that I was getting those letters. You just weren't registered in the system. That I, was I your only problem. Exactly. You I just wasn't, weren't in the system. Nobody, nobody, they knew my, they knew who I was, but they, the coaches didn't know my real name because I was always using somebody else's name. I feel that you must have gone to, like, camps when you were younger and, pe- and you walked in and people are like, who the hell is this guy? And then you must have just, like, shown some people up and just must have left the gym feeling confident yeah i I feel like that's happened to you a bunch of times i mean we like back back in my days we didn't have like all these camps these kids have to go to so then how did you get exposed it was was that 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 one aau that one aau summer that's it that's it like i i like like (laughs) it's crazy because i didn't even have like some like some of the games i wore like a penny hardaway jersey or I had like a real jersey on and people was looking at me like, why he got a real jersey on? You know, and like, it was crazy. Like the the AU team that I was playing on, they had been going down to to Ohio for years. So those, the, the, the opposing players, they knew who, they knew who was coming. Like, okay, yeah. my team's coming, Mo Pete's coming. And then Mo one Pete. year I showed up as they looking at me like, bro, what's your name? I'm like, what you mean? I'm my name Morris Peterson. They like, no, nah, your name ain't Morris Peterson. Like, we know who that is. And you know, I just played it off and, and and we killed them. Like like the like the like our style of play, like every time we stepped on the court, everybody came and surrounded our court because we were the most athletic. We were dunking. We were putting a show on, ISOs, like we we we've we been doing that. Dude, that's an, that need, that needs to be um a movie. Yeah. Like that's a that's a true that's a true story. The fact that you just weren't in the system and you just went down yeah, to I, Ohio. I, I have to run into the right type of people. Right type of people. Well, man, if the I, right. I, th- I thought it would be Ice Cube when I joined the big three, but that is yeah. not him. So well, we're gonna talk maybe when I run later. into a guy like Fifty Cent or somebody. Man, they who got would the take me seriously, you know? It doesn't even take that much money to shoot a movie these days. It's like a couple million. That's not a lot of money. Yeah. Well, well, actually, that's what we can get. Actually, no. I wanted to get into your 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 contract that you got mm-hmm. uh, coming from Michigan, but we'll get to that later. Okay. Um. So can we start? Let's let's move into the NBA right now. Yeah, that's fine. Let's go to your first NBA game. Emotions. Night before, were you nervous? Um, where was the game? Well, How I, did you? What, uh, we were in it. Charlotte. I think we were playing Orlando. Unfortunately, I and unfortunately I didn't get to play in the first game because my first son was born. Oh, congratulations! Thank well, you. I get a little late. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I I didn't play in the first game and. I cannot remember who the second game was. What about feelings like making the team? What about like, what, what describe like the coach saying, "Hey, like congratulations, we're going to give you a contract. Welcome." Well, to here's the well, here, well, here's the word. Here's the other weird part to to. I like I have to mention this. Of like, course. okay, go ahead. Junior college, my sophomore year in junior college, this yeah. would have been '97. Yeah. I put my name in the NBA draft. You know, without talk, without consulting with my AAU coach who who knows my game and brought me up and boom, 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 and he was like, no, you're not ready for that. I'm like, coach, what you mean I'm not ready? I got to get to the league. I'm not trying to come back to Flint. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I, I'm, I'm trying to get to the NBA right, you know, right now. I'm getting like, I, my coach was telling me the Spurs would take me second round. Who said that? Sorry. My, my coach, Francis Flax. Okay. You know, we, he, he, uh, who was the, um, I'm trying to think who was the, the GM at the time. I think it was KC, KC somebody was the, the GM at the time. He told me he spoke to him several times because in junior college, what was crazy, my 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 freshman year, well my sophomore year, I was playing point guard because our our you know our point guard wasn't eligible until January. Okay. So I, I started the first part of the season off playing point guard. Aren't you a shooting guard though? Yeah, I'm a shooting guard, but but I could handle the ball. So and it was it was crazy because it was like 
I'm like, okay, I can do that. You know, so I remember the first game, it was like the, like – most most guys guard by position. If you're a point guard, you have to check the point guard. If you're a shooting guard, you check the shooting guard. So I had a little guy. I always have a little guy on me. Yeah. And, he, and they used to always try to press me. And I boom, boom, boom. And I blow by him. And they'd be like, whoa. And then I'd get a ball up. Somebody would dunk. You know, and I spent the first half just being an assist guy. I scored when I wanted to. But when I really actually got into, you know, playing my game is, you know, running the wing. You know, I was running the wing, catch and shoot. Yeah threes dunk whatever so that's kind of like when I really got into you know play people really got to see what I could really do because bringing the ball up you know they would trap me I'm throwing the ball so I'm kind of like out of the offense a lot <laughs> in college when you're playing the one yeah in junior college or whatever so because they press a lot yeah so I'm giving the ball up a lot so it's taken away from my offense so when my, when my, my guard got back which I was, you know, I was ecstatic about that. Like, now I can run the floor and run the wing and get my open dunks and, and yeah. do all of that. So, you know, that that was exciting. But to go back, I was when I, I put my name in the draft in 1997, right? So my coach, you know, I talked to him. We had a heart to heart. He was like, nah, you're not ready. You're not ready. So How old were you? I was was 19. Okay. You ought to be 19. Okay. So... He was like, no, you're not ready. You're too skinny. You're not strong enough. That's a man's league and, and all of that. I was like, I wasn't, I wasn't even thinking about that. I wasn't even worried about that because I've, I've always played against grown-ups. Yeah. But he's like, yeah, I know that, but the NBA, you see who's in the NBA? Yeah. Look at Shaq. What are you going to do if you, you, you have to switch on Shaq? I was like, follow him. <laughs> <laughs> he can't shoot free throws. I, like, I know that. You know what I mean? I'm going to follow him. He yeah. was like, no, you're not ready. You're not ready. So... I sent my letter in. You have a certain you have a certain amount of time for when you declare your name in a draft. Yeah. To send a letter to to withdraw it. I've heard all this about Lindell Wigington about his situation right now, and he withdrew. So I know what you're talking about. Right. Yeah. So so the weird thing, the weird thing that happened was, you know, my letter was never received. Right. Man, you <laughs> which I thought was like, what? What? Did you have an agent? No, I didn't sign an agent. Oh my! That's what God, I'm saying. I never. That's why. That's why I was able to go back to college because I didn't sign an agent. So it's weird. Listen, now it's weird, right? So look, I don't sign an agent. I can't go D1 because obviously I just uh, went un as an unrestricted. You know, yeah. I didn't make the draft, so you know, so so now it puts me in a whole different level that I wish every basketball player could do exactly what I did because like, think about it now I had to go D2 right yeah so now that and so two years so two years later 1999 right yeah my college career is over with guess what what I'm a free agent as soon as my career is done I can go sign with an NBA team any NBA team any, any, any NBA team because guess what I'm a free agent Oh. There's no rules on what I can and can't do. I can sign for any amount of years I want to, any amount of money. It's not the no it, rookie contract. No rookie. It's not. I, 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 there's no rookie contract. I can sign for whatever. So how pumped were you when you found that out? I, I was. That was crazy. Because you I, know a team's gonna pick you up. Right. And and what happened was my first visit was New York. I went to New York. What, right? year, what year did you go to New York? That was 99. 99. It was, it, it, at the end, I, it, I was in the division too. So we were, I think we were, we were done before, we were done before um, D1 okay. tournament was over with. So then and you we went to go done. visit the Knicks. Yeah, I went to go visit the Knicks. So At Madison Square Garden? Yes. Fuck. They were playing the Heat in the playoffs. I'm Latrell Sprewell, you know, that's my guy from everybody. everybody I'm going to let everybody know right now, Latrell Sprewell is a Flintstone. Am I in yellow? What does that mean, Flintstone? Flint, Michigan. Oh, okay. I'm <laughs> sorry. Yeah, Over so every, everyone thinks he's from Milwaukee, but he's from Flint, Michigan. Okay, Flint, Michigan. So, so I fly to New York. Yeah. I fly to New York. They fly me in. I do my workout and everything. So now I'm going to the to the game. Where are you I'm, sitting? I'm sitting right behind a backboard. Flint courtside? Yeah, courtside. Of course. Any celebrities near you? Oh, man. I wouldn't... Uh, I'm sure it was, but I probably didn't know who they were at the time. <laughs> okay. You know, yeah, yeah, <laughs> but um, but yeah, so they wanted to sign me, yeah, like, like I was gonna be the first, like, I was gonna, they wanted to sign me, yeah. right? But they was like, and what, in which I later learned that you know, is a certain veteran, veteran brotherhood, right? So they the try next. to keep their veterans on, that okay. oh, young fella's gonna get a job, let's try because they would have had to cut like David Wingate. Okay. They would have had to cut David Wingate and bring me in. Like I could have went from Division Two 
basketball career over with, straight into the NBA playoffs on a roster and play. For the New York Knicks and yeah, Madison Square yeah, Garden. if they would have signed me. But it's a family with them. They like but the yeah, people like, with the family. Yeah, and, and I respect it. I didn't respect it in the beginning because I didn't know the, what the NBA life was, you know, like how that, that lookout it's, is. It's you know, they look out for the, each other. And is that what try, it's like? Yeah, it's a brotherhood. It's like a real brotherhood. Yeah, like, I don't know. You know, every, like, the, like, you know, it's a real brotherhood if you're clicking with that person like that. You know what I'm saying? So... So at this point, you're learning the business side of the NBA, essentially, is what you're saying. Right. So it's like, damn, I thought I, like, I could have made history that way as well. Like, that, that would have been crazy. Like, that's never happened. And Flint it probably must, won't ever happen again. Flint must have just been, like, were you in the papers back in your hometown? You must have been. Yeah, like, we played in, we played in, and, and this, is, this, is how, this is how my college, this is how I actually got to college. Like, my first college was Trinity Valley. Where is that? I don't know Athens, that. Texas. Okay. I heard Texas is different. Athens, Texas. Yeah, first time I seen red dirt. It was like one fifteen outside. I was like, wow, it's blazing out here. And was and how I got there and how I got there and how my journey started yeah. was I was playing in Glenn Rice's Pro Am League that he did every summer when he came back home. Okay. And me and Pruitt with it, Pruitt Allen. He was like he was the number, you know, the top high school guard in in in, in Michigan. He okay. went to Central, right? So he ended up he ended up having to he ended up having to um go junior college because he got in trouble or whatever in high school, right? Yeah. I mean that and that was my boy. So, you know, we we played we played together in that in that Jordan Pro Am, right? So Rob Falaska was a was an assistant coach at Mott Community College in Flint. He got the, he was getting a job in Trinity Valley. Wow. And he came to the Pro Am to, you know, looking for players. Yeah. And what's crazy is the story behind that is we I see I see this white guy in the parking lot, right? Yeah. So so we roll the window down. Hey, you lust? We what you doing around here? Because you know it's, it's yeah. predominantly black. It's the pro amp. You you don't see a white guy. <laughs> so we were like, you the police? You for the coach shut the gym down? Like we didn't know what was going on, right? He was like, no, I'm a coach. He came up to the he came up to the window, right? He's like, yeah. no, I'm a coach. You the police? I'm like, oh, you a coach? He was like, yeah. He was like, I'm a coach. I'm, here. I'm finna go in here and look at some players. I said, oh, okay. All right, coach. Like, we, we just knew he was the police, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, we, so, so, after that, you know, we get out the car. We go to the gym. We get ready for our game, yeah. right? So, I think we had, like, 40 apiece. So, he came up to me. He, came, he comes running up to us after the game. Yeah. He's like, hey, wait a minute. Wait a minute. You too. Come here. I need to talk to y'all in the locker room right now. So, I'm like, I told you he was the police. <laughs> so, we go to the locker room, right? So he, 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 you know, he tells us, you know, his situation. He's a coach. He's going to get this job at Trinity Valley. He needs players. He knows about Pruitt. He said, Pruitt, I know who you are, but who are you? Like, he's pointing at me. I'm like, ah, oh, man, I'm just, a, I'm just a street kid. This, this is my cousin. You know, we always, like, we, like when you're from Flint, you always refer to your, your closest friend. Oh, that's my cousin. Like, because, you know, it's family like that, right? Okay, okay. That's how, that's how that's it be. Cousin. So, like, that's my cousin or whatever, right? Yeah. So he's like. Well, I want him and I need you too. I'm like, Ooh. I'm like, I'm not even in school. Like, I, I don't even go to school. So once I told him my story, boom, 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 he was like, man, look, we, I can get you down there. You have to come a month early. Get you, we'll sign, we'll set you up to take your GED. I'm like, my GED, what's that? <laughs> no, like, it's a general education yeah. equivalency test, right? I'm like, did you have to take it? Yeah, I had to take it. I dropped out of high school. You just can't go to college. <laughs> Man, the things that you can do. I was dumb. I was smart. You know what I mean. I was. I was. It wasn't that I. I couldn't do the school work. I just knew you were I good just, at basketball. Yeah, I just. I just wasn't interested in school at that time in my life because Not a lot of people are. the stuff I had going on. It, it was. It just. I was just so distracted from it. Right. So, I couldn't imagine being 17 years old, like the story you said before, and seeing all these letters for you. Because right. you know where you're coming from. Like it seems like you're not the most appreciated person. A lot of people aren't like coming up to you saying you're going to do great things. And then once you see those letters, like like you're at least yeah, my it, mind would have just been blown like yeah, holy it, shit it changed it, it blew my mind it must have changed your life yeah because you know i didn't i didn't i didn't know like i didn't know i was that good like that you know i and just want to see the I letters just, yes i just thought i was just you know just playing ball but you know in someone else's eyes they were like Shh, hey we, where you from we, we you know we, we, who are you and and then and then I took it serious. You must have had some sleepless nights where you just think about your future. Oh yeah, like I mean when, I think, I think about it all the time. And, and then what I tell people is like, 
you know, I was basketball dumb when I when I went to college because you got to think I went from junior college. Listen to this. I went from junior college, not even junior college, junior high school, not junior high school playing intramurals. I never played five. I never played orchestra ball, you know, you know, organized basketball. And then I go from that to playing division one competition. Because I, I went to junior college. That's unheard of. And and the guys in junior, you, I can throw you some names that of guys that played in the junior college that went pro. Lee Nalen. Really, can you do it quick? Lee Nalen, Steven Jackson. Uh, man, it's uh, who else I played with? Uh, who else played in those JUCOs? Man, I can't even remember. Oh, it's, a, it's a lot of them, though. If you Google NBA guys that played in junior college, yeah, it's a lot of them. All right, we got to get to the NBA now. I got a pepper you. Are you good with yeah, that? Yeah, I'm ready. Kobe Bryant. Kobe. You guarded him. Yeah, I guarded him. What's the toughest thing? What's what what appealed to you about Kobe Bryant? What made him so good? He, he, he um I believe in I mean, he's just he you could tell he's a guy that's just that was just a gym rat. Interesting. Always worked on his game. You know, he 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 was always mentally prepared every night. Like that's tough. You think about you. You think about the mindset you have to have. Like me, I, I didn't grow up. I was so different. Like I never worked on my game before. You were just natural. Yeah, good. it was just natural. It was whatever I saw. I picked yeah. up on it. And like to go back when I was saying I was basketball dumb. I didn't know what a closeout was. Like the basketball terms. Yeah. Close switch. What, what does like, that mean though? Like you know you, you know like just say you're checking one guy and. Just say you, you like just say if my guys on the wing, right? Yeah. You, you have to be and, he, and they teach you to play help side defense. Okay. You know help side defense and then so the, guys, the defensive rotation. So if if my point guard get beat, I have to stun at the ball. Yeah. Just to slow up his momentum and ten times out of ten he's gonna pass to my man. So instead of running out and flying by like I was used to doing, yeah. Because that's because I didn't know that's all I knew. Yeah. You're supposed to like kind of break down, put your hands up like that, like a closeout. Oh, I see what you're saying. Like, yeah, okay. I didn't know. I didn't know basketball terminology. I, so had when, to, I had to learn all of that. So when you went into the NBA, did coaches know that and work with you maybe one on one before well, you? Well, I had to learn that in junior college. Oh, those are junior yeah, college. Yeah, because okay. that, you know that's that's kind of like where it came Essentials. from. Yeah, because I didn't know what none of that like the terminology for basketball yeah. was, could close out or yeah. trap, um, box out, anything. You know. Yeah. Um, NBA, the favorite rink or arena that you've played in outside of the... No, but back to Kobe. You know, Kobe, Oh yeah, Kobe. he, he was right. a special guy. Yeah. I, Iverson was a special guy. Oh, yeah. I, did you play against Michael I, Jordan when he was in the I Wizards? Play, yes. It was, yes, Jordan. When, yeah, I played against... Yeah, actually, Jordan. Crazy story. Um, <laughs> yeah, let's get some Michael Jordan stories. Eddie Jones, who I played with in Charlotte, right? Yeah. Was, he was with Jumpman. Yeah. You know, he was signed to Jumpman, George. Yeah. So I'm looking like, damn, you boy getting all these George. You must be signed. You must know Mike, huh? He's like, I'm signed with Mike, young fella. I'm like, you know, that's why you see all this Jumpman. You, I get it. It was crazy. We wore the same size. <laughs> so I'm like, yo, you get, and, and like, that was like, it, like any any kind of like different 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 difference we had in colleges with my coaches was about my shoes. What like shoes I had to have wear? Jordans on every time. Yeah, I had to. Like, do you have the team like? Yeah, of course. What numbers are those? These are forty fives. This when he. These are the ones when he came back. Okay. The number forty five on the back. Nice. Yeah, these exclusive Space Jam. Space. But um, <laughs> but yeah, I had I always have to wear Jordans. Cool. And then and, and that was my like. And then we made the playoffs. He was like, he used to always tell me, he was like, hey, my big homie, he he loved your game, but he never he never he never would tell me who that was. Who the big homie? Who was. big homie was? I'm like, who you talking about? No, I don't want to. I don't want you to get the big head. You you a rookie. You you. I don't want your head to blow up like this that. Right? In Charlotte. This is I was in Charlotte, yeah. right? And so our first playoff games. He was like, now I'm about to tell you who Big Homie is. And the only reason he had to tell me was that because I had a pair of Jordans sitting in my locker. Like me and Eddie Jones sat next to each other. Okay. So I had a pair of Jordans sitting in my locker after I had went and warmed up for the, you know, so I And they weren't up. there before. They weren't there before. So I'm like, the equipment guy must have put them, you know, in the wrong, you know. So I put them in Eddie Jones because he's next to me. I'm like, he must have made a mistake and mixed it wrong Eddie up, right? Yeah. So, so I come back in, I'm stretching, I'm stretching as the, you know, cause the rookies go out first and then the vets go out. So I'm, I come back in there and I'm stretching, I'm stretching. I got, I got some, some, some Jordans on. I forgot which ones I had on, but I, you know, I went to the mall and bought them, right? So yeah. he was like, what you doing? 
I'm like, what you mean? He was like, why are you wearing those? He was like, you, you didn't see the shoes that was in your locker? I was like, man, them yours, right? They were like, they were, they was these right here. Yeah. But the bottom was teal, like teal, teal. Okay. The bottom was teal. Like he, 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 he personal made them for Eddie Jones and he gave me a pair to wear. He was like, this, this is from the big homie. Big homie said, you can wear these. And I was like, fuck, big homie is Michael Jordan. Fuck me up. That, that's messing <laughs> me up right now. Just thinking about up, right? the fact so, that I'm sitting here talking to you, but that actually happened to you. That's incredible. Right. Fuck me up, right? So I'm like, what? Big homie is MJ. So so that right there, he so Mike Michael Jordan always allowed me to wear Jordans in the NBA without being under contract. Anybody cool. else, you had to be under contract. That's cool. And then the crazy story, the other story I would tell you is when we were in Chicago, right? Yeah. When I was playing with the Bulls. Yeah. We were horrible. Were you? Yeah, because we were young. We, you know, the triangle, I felt like, I felt like we weren't playing, you know, we were young. We were the youngest team in the league at this time <laughs> when yeah. I was with the Bulls. I think our average age was like 23 or 22. Eddie Curry was 16 going on 17. Jesus. Tyson Chandler was 16 going on 17. You guys must have I was trouble. 21. I think I was the oldest on the team. No, no, I wasn't. Well, if you're 23, living in Chicago with a bunch of young guys, you can't tell me that there Jamal was Jamal Crawford, Jason Williams, uh, Jay, all those I guys were young. Up. Yeah, but um, yeah, we were we were young. We had Oakley. Oakley was a veteran. That's another guy I wanted to talk Kendall to. Kendall Gill. Oakley. Kendall Gill. Yeah. You guys, can you see it? Yeah, I see it. Eddie Curry, Travis Best, Greg Anthony, Dolly Boy, Ron Artest. Yeah, we had, yeah. What's Charles Oakley like as a guy? He's obviously an intense player. Is he a nice guy off the court? Oakley? Yeah. He all right. He all right. Yeah, he all right. <laughs> we, had, we, fell out this, we fell out last summer during the big three. Oh, no. Yeah, you, you didn't see that, how he was just going at players? Well, I didn't watch it. All, the only <laughs> thing I saw about him was he got, kicked out of, he got kicked out of the MSG. Yeah, he funny as shit. But, yeah, he got his fame from that. That's how he was allowed to, because you're supposed to be, because if you look at the big three coaches, everybody is like Hall of Famers. Yeah. And then you got Oakley. He, <laughs> he was only relevant because of the bat, you know, the, the thing that happened with him in, in MSG, right? Really? So well, that's, that's how, how, that's how, how, that's how he it. became a coach in the big three. He yeah, shit it on me in the first game. I didn't know that. Went at Steven Jackson the next game, and it became a soap opera. Like every game, like there was no cameras by our bench yeah. after the first, you know, the first game. Yeah. After me and him fell out, after that, it was a, it was a camera guy right there. Soap opera. Yeah, soap opera. Maybe that's what he wants, though. Yeah, Stay that's, relevant. That's, that's, yeah, that's how he stays relevant. Soap opera. Um, Metal World Peace, too. What's he like as oh, a person? Oh, that's my guy. He's a nice person. Yeah, Ron is, Ron is my guy. Oh, yeah, guy. Ron, sorry. Ron, Ron. <laughs> <laughs> right Rapper, on. Ron, Ron. Um... How does it work in the NBA with shoes? Do you get as many shoes as you want? Like, if you want a pair of shoes and you just ask the trainer, do you get them, or you have well, to be sponsored, or how does it work if you want shoes? I think most. I think most. I think most of those guys. I think. I believe. And see, this is this is what this is what made my situation so different. I have no idea because I think I think when you sign your first rook, that rookie contract, I think you either get, you have to have. I think that's Nike or Adidas. Nike or Adidas. So I think most players have like. Okay. I don't know what the standard contract shoot shoe deal is. Okay. But I wore whatever I wanted to. Okay, so I bet you were happy about that. Then. Yeah, yeah. Because cool. in college, I it was, you know I, I barely got away with it. Yeah. But you know, it was that's that's just what it was. Like I had to wear Michael Jordans. That's so I, that's sick. Just what though, it was like that he allowed you to yeah, wear them. Yeah, that was crazy. Well, coming over it was just, because I had game though, right? So I never like made I made I made his so when you look at it from a business standpoint, I made his product look good. Yeah, <laughs> he's a businessman at the end of the yeah, day. Yeah, that brand, that Michael Jordan brand is, is man, that that brand is strong. Well, coming out of Chicago, do you ever hear any stories about uh, Michael back when he oh, played there in the nineties? Oh, of course. Can you he's, give us like Can you give us like a couple maybe Michael Jordan stories? I remember, I, I remember, I think I heard one time he was late for a game and he got the whole police es escort, shut the highway down. Mike's coming. We got to get Mike to the gym. <laughs> To like shut the shut the whole the whole highway to the down. United Center. Yeah, his path to the United Center, police escort. 
He was. He was late for the game. Late for the up. game. And he, hey, I, Michael, where are you? I, I I don't know how that came. How it transpired. It came about. Like they, I'm sure he had to be at a gym at a certain time, and that he's usually there. And they was like, "Where's Mike at?" And, that is I, and I don't know if he. Hey, I'm late, bro. I don't know if he <laughs> called it. <laughs> called the older the uh i don't know how that happened but yeah i heard that story and <laughs> through man, chicago just, yeah, please, that's just, yeah yeah mike mike's cool we we hung out in the club a few times did you yeah what club in chicago club of state is that in chicago yes yeah, in chicago so he, only he club the king, he hung out is he the king of chicago he of must course be, so that's black, black jesus black jesus. yeah <laughs> any other stories out of chicago you could tell me yeah like like he he's big and he like he's into motorcycles right like he's yeah. big, like he's big on motorcycles so yeah. I, I can remember times I've been at a club and I and I hear on the walkie talkie hey Michael's about, Michael's about to pull up get all those cars out of the get all those cars out of the VIP and, and he just clear them out for the, for Michael and his bikes move those Bentleys those all those cars move them. And I used to be like, hey, don't move my shit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Me and Mike cool like that. So don't move my shit. You'll see all these motorcycles parked around my car. <laughs> That's incredible. Yeah, don't move my shit. Me and Mike cool like that. I heard he used to like, if he wanted to, he'd smoke a cigar before the game. I heard that a couple times. Like sometimes he'd, like you said, show up late because oh, yeah, he was I'm smoking sure. a cigar yeah, I'm outside. Sure. I'm sure he probably did. I mean, you got to, I mean, you got to think like people, you, 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 you're not going to do things that you're not, that's not normal. Yeah, that you just because you have a game tonight. Yeah, because well, if it's him, that's yeah, the basketball game. <laughs> You're not going to change your whole lifestyle. Like, I guess so. Just depending on what you do, you know yeah. what I mean. Like, if you if you like to drink, of course you're not going to do that before the game, right? Yeah, you go wait till after. I know, but, but I feel, you, I feel you, like you're going to be you're still going to be yourself. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, because but I get, you've been we've been playing basketball for so long. It's, it's like, in your it's in your yeah, DNA. It's, it's in your DNA. So it's like, yeah, I'm going out tonight. I know we got a game tomorrow. So I'm going out tonight. Well, that's a question I want to ask you. You gotta, you gotta live it. You gotta have fun. You got, you gotta enjoy it to the fullest. And I did that. That a boy. Yeah. Did you ever get in trouble playing in Chicago? You guys said you're a young team going out. You weren't that good. No. Never. Nothing no. like that. No. I almost got robbed once in Chicago. Yeah. Coming the out of side? coming out of coming out of a club one night. Man. But, did they but, know you but, played for the Bulls? Yeah. Of course. I was. You know, shining. I was shining. I had diamonds everywhere. <laughs> So, you know, and, and what's weird, I felt comfortable at, it was Club Voyeur, to be exact, right there on, right there on the corner of Ohio, across from the 24-hour McDonald's, right? <laughs> I go to this club specifically because it's flooded with cops. Why do you go there then? Be because. Safety? Yes. I don't do security. Ooh. I don't do security. I've never done security. Do some players hire security? Yes, of course. And you don't? So you I, don't, I, I, I didn't need to because... Like I, ha I had street credibility. Like the guys I hung out, the guys I hung out with were, you know, they had street cred to where, you know, ain't nobody doing nothing to me. Plus I'm, plus I'm too, I'm not out there doing that. Like I'm not out there shitting on everybody, right? Yeah. So if I'm in the club, I, I might, I might shit, I might buy the bar off everybody. We all drinking tonight. You know what I mean? I, I would do stuff like that. So and people would that kind of gives you like, okay, like he real, like he one of the real ones because you got some Hollywood guys now. Like everybody's, you know, you got Hollywood guys that that want to have that street image and want to want to have that street background, but you don't. Did you ever see yourself maybe get out of line and have to straighten yourself out? Maybe like yourself, you were getting a little too Hollywood. No, like when you made all that money for the first time, man. Like you must, your some of it must have gone to your head. Nothing. Nothing. I, I, I was. You got to think. I, I come from. I come from Flint, Michigan. We always had money. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Old I just 20. had. A, I just had a lot of it. You know, <laughs> more than I'd ever imagined in my life. But it didn't. I didn't go crazy. Like I, I, I bought Bentleys and shit. You know, cars and yeah. Of course, you're gonna do that. Bought my mama house. You gonna do did that? You? Yeah, of course. That's sick. Where yeah. did you live at in Chicago? Did you get like a condo downtown? Actually, I had a house um, Northbrook up north, which was weird because you kind of have to base your living on where the practice facility is. Where's the practice facility? The, the practice facility was up north, but we played downtown. The United Center is downtown. Yes, okay. yes, the United Center is downtown, which yeah. was crazy. Like with with Chicago traffic, is it bad? Whew, I, I'm talking it? about. In order for me to get to the gym on a game day, like we had to be in the gym by like no later than six o'clock. 
If the game's at 8? If the game's at 7.30. You had to be there an hour and a half before the game? Yeah, okay. because, you know, you have to prep and you have to be I, ready. I thought it was longer, tape, You might need, yeah. you might, it just depends. Like, rookies, a couple, like an hour, like two hours before. Do any of you guys take a helicopter in? No, I've never seen that. I heard Kobe used to take a helicopter in. I, he he, he might have did. <laughs> I, I wouldn't. I would not believe it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's different levels of Hollywood right yeah. there. But he's in LA. I'm pretty sure. I mean, I could. That's understandable. I had a question. If I if I could if I could have took a helicopter to games, I would have because get there in five I'm minutes. sitting in traffic for three hours. Like I would have to leave my house at two thirty to be at the gym by six o'clock. Yes. And you're just sitting in your car in traffic. Man, the Chicago. The team should have bought a helicopter then. That's yeah, ridiculous. But, but but what but what I and then what I end up doing a lot of the times is because you know you you never you can't be late for a game. That's just money out you your get pocket. Fined. Yeah. So I would just get a hotel downtown some nights and then just smart. Yeah. But but you know when D Rose came, now I heard I hear the the practice facility is downtown now. Is it? <laughs> yeah. Well, I had a guy on here for uh, he played for the Chicago. And they got Blackhawks. mad at me. They got mad at me for moving downtown. Why? Like I, I ended up selling. I ended up selling my house and moving downtown. And you know what I'm saying? Why do they get mad? I, and I had two. I don't. I don't know why. Well, I had a guy on here. He played for the Chicago Blackhawks, and they just built the facility downtown like two years ago. Yeah. And he said the same thing you're saying. He's like, it makes it so much better because all the guys yeah, the just commute. live downtown now. Yeah, the commute. It's like yeah. it's crazy. Like well, I didn't know they had yeah, traffic. The commute. You know the traffic from. Because you, because you think about it, you you can't be late for practice trying to come from downtown going north in the morning. Then you're not gonna make it. <laughs> That's right. You're not gonna you you'll be late every day. So you have to live by the practice facility and then try to make it on, on time for game night. Quick question about Chicago. Have you ever had a deep dish pizza? In Chicago, I'm not, big, I'm not big into pizza like that. Well, but I know, but it's the thing that in Chicago, right? The deep yeah, they dish. Had, oh yeah, you yeah, ever had, had one? Had, oh no, I haven't. And but my kid, my kids and stuff have. They eat all that stuff. Like I'm, I'm not big on cheese like that. No, no. Nah. Um, another question I had was for pregame hockey, like a pre-practice before the game. Mm -hmm. It's like set up drills, and that's a question I had with the NBA. When you guys have shoot around, do you guys run drills or is it no, just you? you just, no, you there's just, no. You just go get shots up. You so just go no break drills. the sweat. You you have you have you know you have the ball boys out there. They just rebound for you. you. Just you just go. You just get shots up. You're just breaking the sweat. Oh, okay, see, I you, it's not nothing serious because you know you got to you know. That's, that's, you're playing over 100 games so you, you know so you just get a, you just go break a sweat and then you go back in the locker room go over the film go over the coach's notes stretch okay. some more if you need tape if you need therapy you need treatment you know okay so that's do all of that yeah and then yeah so yeah did the bulls have their own plane yeah every team has their own plane what, Our what, plane. what was your ritual on the plane did you sleep read watch movies movies eight what was the food they gave on the plane? You can eat whatever you want it. It's a restaurant. It's a it's a top five, top five star restaurant in the sky. <laughs> <laughs> With you know waitresses, steaks, whatever you want, Anything. shrimp, every, whatever. Dude, alcohol, champagne. How far is the airport from the United Center? Like, how do you guys? Is it O'Hare? Like we 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 fly out the like. There's there's like a private. You know, like the thing. private area, yeah. Where you just you pull up to the you pull up to the security guard at the gate. You show him your your NBA, your, your Chicago Bulls player card. Yeah. Pull in, you pull in, and then your your plane your plane sitting there. You park maybe 10, 15 feet on the side. Oh, you leave your car? Yeah, you leave your car right there, and then and then you just hop and then you get on the plane. You go to the runway. We go. We land. We got bus coach buses waiting on us. We got coach buses waiting on us. Go to the hotel, and you free to do whatever until the next shoot around in the morning. So when you come back to Chicago and land, are your cars just waiting? Cars still sitting there. You so hop in you your car and go home. Talk about now. You can't drink on the way back. Oh, because of the because you you're, obviously you're driving home once yeah. you land. But yeah. on the way, it's fine. Okay, well let's talk about uh, your favorite place to play in the NBA outside of the United Center. Your favorite rink or arena? Uh, I like seeing the stars. You know. So it'd be New York and L.A. L.A. Yeah, Chicago. I met, I met Laverne and Shirley. Can you believe that? A kid from Flint, Michigan, meeting Laverne and Shirley. I used to watch that show too. Happy Days. Yeah. <laughs> Talk about the time you became starstruck. Like the mo the the biggest person you've met. Like a, a starstruck situation. Who 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 could that be? Probably Denzel. You met Denzel? Yeah, I met Denzel in L.A. Or at New a York? game. At a game. I meet all my stars at the games. 
What's Jack Jesus? Nichols, the Joker, the original Joker. You met Jack? You met Jack. Jack's at all the Laker games. You see yeah, Jack? Yeah, I know Jack, uh, yeah. Chris Rock. Chris. Spike Lee. Spike. Alicia Keys. Um, I met... Man, I met a lot of celebrities. Mostly Man. rappers. Jay-Z. The Goat. Lil Wayne. That's my dog. Uh, Mac Main. <laughs> I know all the Cash Money people. I never met Drake though. I knew I knew I, I met Cash Money when they were the Hot Boys. Oh, back when they were from New Orleans. Yeah, because I had Charlotte. A, yes, yes, because what's crazy? Were they sitting courtside back then? Yeah, of course. The Hot Boys. Yeah, I had I had a music label, Pharmacy Records. Nice. You know, I, I signed a, like like I had a, like a lot of the local talents, right? So I used to walk around with a, a prescription bottle on my neck. So people, people, and it said pharmacy records, right? You know the prescription bottle, yeah, like yeah. right, like the orange. So, and white yeah, cap. so I had that, I had that all diamond out and stuff, right? So when I go to these parties, yo, you got a rap label? I'm like, yeah. I'm, uh, so Jada Kiss, uh, the Locks family, stayed at Jada Kiss Styles, PR. I met a lot of rappers. That's crazy. Just, but but Lil Wayne in specific, I bought them to Flint, Michigan for my birthday in in 1999. You know, wow. my, yeah. So, yeah. Back in I haven't New met Orleans. Nikki. I haven't met Nikki. No. No. Nah, they they came on later. They joined Cash Money later. But you were with them with the Hot Boys back yeah, then. I, I, yeah, I, I met Wayne when they were the Hot Boys, Juvenile, all them boys. I was in Flint, Michigan. That's Never crazy. didn't get to perform because the city was just too crazy. What do you mean too crazy? Man, it was like. <laughs> You gotta like, remember where I'm from, man. I don't know what that like, means. Like, crazy. like crazy. Like, let me tell you how. Like, okay, first of all, it was so many people in this building. What building? The, where the play, where the where the event was held. Okay. Because I had it was my birthday party, but they were going to perform, as, as, of course, right? Okay. We were making money here. <laughs> it's a business, right? We, we try yeah. to make money too, right? Yeah. We have a birthday party, and we're going to charge at the door. It's going to we got the hot boys. So it's in New Orleans. Making money. Yeah. No, it's in Flint. Oh, it's in Flint. Yeah, it's in Flint. And my, they came. Yeah, my hometown. Yeah. That's all. Awesome. We shut the block down. They had the big bus, the big tour bus. Yeah. On my block, no police. We don't need no police around here. Wow. Because, you know, we we well respected in this neighborhood. You know what I mean? So, yeah. no police. <laughs> wow. And the time of the event, we get to the event. We get to the event, right? Yeah. So, we're trying to get everybody off because now, now we're going from the party part to the performance part. So, now they're arriving. Yeah. They're arriving, right? Yeah. So, we had them come. We had them, we had them, we had them guided around the back of the building because when you go around the back and the door you come in you walk up some stairs and you're on the stage okay. because it's too packed it's too packed I see what you're saying it's too packed to have them come from the front door through all the people it's just and plus all the people outside that couldn't get in like it's, it, that would have been crazy so obviously I had police there yeah I mean you have to like there's a lot of jewelry in this yeah location, you have to like. yeah you have to for the artist's sake you gotta have security and all that so and they make it around back. They make it around back. The doors open. We were trying to clear the stage. We're trying to clear the stage so we can start the performance part. But people didn't want to get off the stage. I'm like, yo, y'all got to get off the stage. They right here at the door. Like I see Little Wayne. He even came through the back door, and somebody saw him and they went crazy. And so we was like, hold on, hold on. And they was just just all on the stage. I'm like, see, this shit ain't about to work because people don't know how to act. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Know people don't know how to act, right? So. I know I already paid him. Yeah. So it is at this point it's whatever. So So we didn't perform. So Wayne Wayne look so Wayne just just bum rushes the stage. Yeah. Just ran on the stage and they went nuts. How many people people did they trying get? to get on the stage and and all of that crazy shit. So he had to get off of the stage and go and go back and and, and the police they maced the fucking club. People were spitting up vomiting everywhere. So I I tell the you know so I had a walkie talkie. Okay. So, you to know, who? To, for the police. Okay. Hey, come to the back alley. I need about 30 of y'all. 
So they come to the back alley. I said, guide these guys, get them on the bus, get them up out of here. This is this, this shit over with. Yeah. They busting windows. It's, it's going crazy. Wow. So one, so I go sit in, so I'm, I go to the front of the club. They busting windows. I'm sitting in the club with me and my people, right? We're yeah. sitting in the car and the people are just running around. It's chaos. You see the police hitting the remote. Boop. You know, when they hit that remote, you see their trunks open up. That's where the big boy guns are at in the back of there. So they grabbing, like, you know, because it's, it's, when you hear one gunshot, it's going to be chaos because they don't know. They, they're trying like they don't know what's going to happen. So the first thing they're going to do is get their guns. Right. <laughs> so I'm sitting. So so I have two. I have two. I have two cops in front of my vehicle yeah. in the front and two in the back. Yeah. And I'm just sitting here watching like this is crazy. Wow. And they never got to perform. <laughs> no. And you still paid them? Yeah, you had to. Like, you, you can't, like, that's just business. Man, what a story. But I made it. I obviously got my, I, I made, you know, we money made money, it. obviously, because yeah. it was, shit, 40, it was sold out. <laughs> I haven't even touched on any of the questions, but I love it. Cause Go you're, ahead. We no, got man, all day. You're a great storyteller. We got all day. Like, no. <laughs> yeah, honestly, like I'm not even... Are you rushed for time right now? No, not right you're now. You're good? No, I'm good. Um, I guess not. Yeah, I said okay. What do you think about the new NBA and these super teams? Do you think it's good for the league or do think, you like the way you see, play? This is, this, is, this is what people got to understand. Okay. It's called free agency. Mm -hmm. Do you want to lower the mic just a little? Oh, sorry. Too high? Let me get the yeah, you're good there. there we go. So it's go. called it's called free agency, and this is what people don't think about. And they and then you hear people say, "Well, Michael Jordan and Magic them, they 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 wouldn't have they wouldn't have never done that." You know why? Why? Because their their owners didn't allow them to touch free agency. You're locked in. You're not going nowhere. That and that's the difference. And owners these that's days. That's the difference nowadays. Owners don't do that. They don't lock in the players. I see what you're saying. Michael Jordan, the Magics, the Kareems, there was no opportunity to steal them guys. They never hit free agency. Because they just locked them up. They locked them in. So you can't, you can't be like super team. No, nah, it's not a super team. It's called free agency. If, I, if I'm the owner, KD, lock him in. Yeah. Westbrook, lock him in. I think, I think, I think what happened was... And you can see how how later on these guys developed yeah. in OKC when they were you had KD you had Harden Harden and you had Westbrook you don't let those guys go. But then how, so why do the players have more power now? I mean, it's, like why are they doing it's this? A, it's certain players, certain players can pull strings, right? Depending on who that player is, not not every player is, but I mean, it, I mean. It's, it's just weird. Like I don't, I don't, I don't think it's super team. I think it's just called free agency. Free agency means I can go anywhere or sign with whoever, no matter how many years I battle with that team. Yeah. Oakley trade. Oakley went to the Knicks from the Knicks to the Bulls. Yeah. And still, and still had that same, you know, yeah. killer whatever Instinct. you know whatever he did. I mean, that's just what it is. Like that's just free agency. It's not about super teams. Like like that that made a that may be the result of it. Well, that's what fans call them. Super. I, teams. I don't call it super teams. Free agency. It's free agency. Do you think LeBron's move to LA was a business move? Well, his son's going to high school there, so that was a no brainer. But do you think like he'll start making businesses there? Start. Oh, of course, doing, LeBron. Because he's on his downcline of his career. I don't think he's on a down. Well, he's at his peak, sir. He's at his peak. <laughs> I mean, I think, I think, I think LeBron. He, you know, he, 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 he's doing it his way. Yeah, he, and people can't be mad at that. No, that's that's why it's called free agency. The Cleveland Cavaliers. If you want to be mad at somebody, don't be mad at LeBron. Be mad at the owner who let him hit the free agency market. That's who you get mad at. Never the players. And then, and then, and then the players are going to feel some type of way because you let them hit the market. Yeah. Uh. Oh, so you want me to go out here and see what can happen? All right. I'm, ten times out of Test. ten, that player is leaving. Yeah. One, you know what I'm saying? Well, I do know what you're saying, yeah. It's just like, you're, yeah, it's just a different language than hockey. But it's a, it's a language I'm trying to learn with the whole free agency yeah, and thing. Yeah, and then. And it's then not I, as common with hockey. Right. And then I think now it's like, you know, guys are, guys, guys want rings. So they're going to put themselves in the best situation. Like, like, like for instance, Kevin Durant, where else would he have went to where his game was going to be the same? Same type of – you know he's going to stay west. Yeah, One going to be OKC, one going to be Houston. It's, it's going to be Golden State. 
they play his style of play, of basketball. See, I didn't know that they play his style of basketball. All I know the yeah. style of basketball they play is they shoot three pointers. They, that's his style. West Coast. I love the West Coast offense. That's what we're going to be doing. Oh, oh yeah, that's a great transition. Yeah, we're, New Bridge we're, Academy. Yeah, we're 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 go, we're gonna we're we gonna be doing some exciting things. Congratulations on the new position, Appreciate by the that. way. So, yeah, how did yeah. this come about? How long have you been in Halifax for? Because I know you played for the Rain Men, but did you did you? Well, my fiance is from here. Okay, that's what I was so, going to ask. So I'm, I was always been back and forth, and you know that was that was just the next the next thing I was going to transition into was coaching after I was done. Like, when I did you know that? that? I mean, just just I, I just always knew that. I mean, just from my my AAU coach inspiring me. Cool. Like if, if now that I, now when I look back to all my teammates that I had on those AAU teams, they're yeah. all coaching. In cool. Flint, AAU or doing some type of coaching. Cool. So they all got that inspiration from from Raymond Jones, like, and and it's, and and not even that. It's it's just a way of of, of giving the gift to someone. Yeah. You know, somebody 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 gave it to me and and, and worked with me and made my dreams come true. Well, the amount of knowledge that you have yeah, that you can I, give I, to a younger yeah. generation. I, I like I know I know this game, you know, in and out. Yeah, you have to be able to dribble this basketball. <laughs> you have to be able to create your own shot with that basketball. And what was my third one? You got to be able to shoot. Yeah, cool. That's and that's and that's and that's just and 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 that's and, and and notice I didn't say anything about athletic ability. If long if you can do those things well, and and a perfect example of those are the Kyrie's. Look at Kyrie. He can handle the ball. He can shoot the ball. He's fundamentally sound. And he got the ball on the string. It seems like you know the business side of it too. So maybe if there's these players that are on the come up and they have to make a decision, it seems like you could guide them too about where to go, who to coach, be coached by, and yeah. they move on to another level. And, and you know, I got, I be, I get a lot of, I get a lot of, you know, not a, you know, Instagrams. You know, a lot of kids are following me on Instagram, and you know, don't worry about a D one school. I say that for hockey too. You Don't know, worry it, about it. It doesn't that. matter. It look at I look at um, Devin George who who played with the Lakers the year I came in. He went to a Division three school. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, you know I, I went JUCO. I played two years of junior college and then two years of D one. Yeah. So it's 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 not necessarily about ah I got to get D one. No, you got to put yourself in the best position to where you can showcase your talent. Yeah. You know, don't go the that, showcase. Yeah. yeah, don't go name chasing the school because you, you don't know what that school curriculum is. Yeah, is it is it going to be based on how your game is? Interesting. You know what I'm saying? Have you? Yeah. Oh, sorry, you, you keep going. No, no. I'm Do you have a? Have you ever had a conversation with Lindell Wigington? No, I don't, I don't. No, no. Well, he's obviously you know who he is, and he's hopefully going to be in the NBA soon. I've he heard come, of him, yeah. Well, he, I but think he Coulter, Coulter Simmons was telling me about him. Yeah? Yeah. Well, he didn't declare for the NBA, but he plays at Iowa State, and he's, from what I see from his highlights, he's pretty incredible. So I just thought two great minds from Nova Scotia would have had a conversation. I just thought I'd ask. Yeah, I, w- I would love to sit down and talk to that guy. No, he's, I'd love to sit down and talk to him too to get him on the podcast. Yeah. But, um, Jerry, let me read through these here. Yep. Michael Jordan stories, you had him. Super teams talked about him. Shoes in the NBA talked about him. Oh, yeah. Best trash talkers in the NBA. Was there anyone that sticks Kevin out? Kevin Garnett. Kevin Garnett, biggest trash talker. He's going to cuss you and your mom out. Give me an example. Man. If you can say it on the air. I can't. <laughs> you can't? Okay. It's all, it's all explicit. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. Um, this guy, this guy cusses people out while shooting free throws. That's, I was like, damn, <laughs> KG don't stop. Uh, biggest welcome to the NBA moment. Biggest. Like, you know, like you'll get dunked on or maybe uh, Jordan will put up 40 on you. It's Kobe, anything. Just like biggest, I'm here, I've made it. Biggest moment, you think? Uh, I don't know what that would be. I mean, I loved all of it. I mean, I love every moment of it, you know. My, I think the fun part, the fun part for me was checking the greatest. I checked the greatest players that ever played. <laughs> Iverson, Kobe. I've chased the best shooters in this game: Reggie Miller, Ray Allen, Allen Houston. Like I've checked. Like that's that's the part I loved about it. And I did it at six nine, checking guys like Allen Iverson. Like that's crazy. There's peak, there's kids that are going to be listening to this and. Yeah, just ex- I, like I took it. I like, and then and then what I'm gonna teach my kids is, hey, you got to be able to defend. Yeah, it, 
that's going to get you your your offense is going to get you the look and your defense is going to keep you there incredible yeah so you got to be able to defend and have fun doing it don't take it as a punishment like it's fun to lock somebody down T-Mac Kobe no 30s on me <laughs> no 20s I don't think that's awesome <laughs> yeah that's so like I, I, bravo. Defend, I defended in that that that's that that's what you know kept me around it's cool that you played against Kobe back when the Lakers were like good like you played against yeah. in their top era top era Anyways. That's when Kobe had the afro. The afro. What number was he wearing? Eight. Eight. Old Kobe. Um, I mean, I got everything I wanted out of you. Every single question. You you told some amazing stories. I know the listeners are gonna be jaw drop when they oh, hear yeah. the things that you just oh, said. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, <laughs> I'd love to have you back. Like, oh halfway, yeah, anytime. Are you anytime. See, like halfway through the season when you're with yeah, Newbridge? Yeah, like, I'd yeah. love to have you back. Yeah, that'll be cool. That I, 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 I love it. I have a, a I love friend talking hoops and like this yeah. is cool. Yeah, we have a friend. Uh, who's a big basketball guy. He's a friend of mine, but he's working right now. He mm-hmm. really wanted to be here. So I said that you'd come back maybe on a weekend or something yeah. so we can be here and ask you some questions. But if you're more than, yeah, if you want to come back, man, yeah. yeah love yeah, to have I, you. Mean, I, I love doing stuff like this. Love it. Gives a, you know, a narrative, you know, to the people like, yeah, this, yeah, well, this is what really goes on. The people that you're going to be coaching the community, they're listening to this. So it's just right. another platform for you to speak freely and yeah. people will listen for sure. If you want to give a shout out or say hello to anyone, feel free. If not, I'll do what I do. I mean, I just, you know, I, I, I want everybody to, you know, come out for the tryouts. You know, your, your dream can happen. I can help you make it happen. I know what it takes. I've been through it on all levels. And, you know, I just encourage parents to invest in their kids because, you know, that's what that's basically what you're doing. You know, your kid is an investment, especially involving in sports. Mm-hmm. Like if they, you know, they may have a you never know, like they don't have to go to the NBA. They can play overseas like there's always basketball outlets. And for me, basketball has taken me all over the world. And, you know, I, I didn't have the opportunity to go overseas and play. I, I wish I could have, and I was trying to, because I want to see that part of the world. It's all about seeing the world, right? Of course. Yeah, and, and, and why not let sports do that for you? It's not coming out your pocket. Use sports as a vehicle. Yeah, you can use it to, to better your life like, like it did for me. That, that was my way out of the ghetto. All right. Well, once again, thank you for coming on the podcast, Eddie. Um, Thanks for having me. You're welcome. Uh, Everyone (laughs) listening, make sure to go to all of our social. Oh, I forgot to ask this one question. Um, Semi-pro, the basketball movie, they play out of Flint, Michigan. Do do people in Flint, do they get upset about that movie, how they make fun of the city? Or I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't think I've, I've gotten anyone's perspective on that, on that, on that topic, but have I mean, you seen the movie? Yeah. Of okay. course. <laughs> Will Ferrell, right? Yeah. All right. Yeah, so no course. one's mad. Yeah, I mean, I mean, anything that's showing love back in my time, like, I love it. Like that was cool to me. The rink they play in or the arena, is that actually in Flint? Yeah. yeah. It's, um, it's an, it's an, um, it's an old arena on the South side. <laughs> my mother, my mother, we stayed on the South side of Flint you know when we moved from the north side once my mother rehabilitated herself and got her you know her life back together or whatever but yeah we, we was on the north, it was on the south side i just had to make sports arena there you go another connection all right once again everyone thank you for listening if you could go to all of our social media outlets instagram twitter facebook youtube itunes soundcloud all that good stuff like subscribe comment once again i love each and every one of you thank you for clicking the high button and we are out